So when you look to invest overseas, um, who are some of the businesses that you do invest into? Yeah, that's um, it's a good question, Steph, and it's it's right. We call it internally um, the best ideas fund. So we do get to be very patient and very disciplined mm-hmm. around um, setting very high hurdles. Effectively, you know, we want the highest quality businesses and the most undervalued high quality businesses. Yep. Um, businesses with you know very attractive long term growth tailwinds, all those sort of things behind them. So. In the portfolio at the moment, with those things in mind, we've got positions in a couple of enterprise software companies like Microsoft and SAP. They'll really benefit from cloud computing in the years and hopefully decades to come. Uh, We've got a couple of Chinese digital um, platforms, Alibaba and Tencent, who really play across the digital ecosystem in in China. We've got two of the leading US digital platforms, uh, Alphabet and Facebook. Um, and the audience will be very familiar with those businesses. Yeah. We've also got Visa, uh, which really benefits from this ongoing sustained transition from cash mm. and check-based payments around the world to card-based payments and online payments and tap-to-go payments and those sort of things. Um, and then we've also got a position in uh, Estee Lauder as well, which um, uh, similar to our investment in Starbucks, so Estee Lauder and Starbucks, one of the key growth engines for those businesses in the decades to come will be the growth in the consumption sector within China, particularly towards the sort of mass affluent and affluent part of the um, consumption pyramid in in the years and decades to come. So as it becomes more middle class or the middle class say in China becomes richer, they spend more money on coffee, which we already spend uh, too much money on in Australia. Hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, there should be more disposable income in China and that will benefit Alibaba's businesses, Tencent's businesses, uh, but also Estee Lauder and Starbucks business in China as well. Yeah, I can see there's a big tech presence there and specifically that the visa play and the movement to online payments, I guess I'm still trying to convince my grandfather that cash is gone. Cash is not king anymore. Um, and he still tries to go to his local supermarket and pay cash and they don't accept it. And then he, he gets angry. I'm like, well, maybe COVID will, you know, this sort of environment, cash, you know, people don't want to be sort of handling or accepting cash too much at the moment. So maybe this is an accelerant in his change in behavior. And we are seeing that around the world. People, um, you know, that they're, they're, they're the card companies talk about this war on cash. Uh, that's yeah. sort of been their structural growth um, channel for, for a long, long time now. And of course, no one wants to handle cash at the moment or accept cash. So it's just a further accelerant to the trends that were already in place. Yeah. Um, but it provides a lot of conviction around the long-term uh, addressable opportunity that those businesses have. Yep. Yeah.